Hello, my front end friends. Grids auto fit, like we can see working right now, is awesome, right? It just creates new things. We don't need media queries, which is incredible. It figures out the columns for us, but it just keeps on creating more and more and more and more columns. And that can be really frustrating at times. Sometimes you want it to create columns, but then stop at a certain point, even though you have more room and it wants to keep adding those columns in there. Well, if that is a problem you've run into, you're definitely in the right place because what we're going to be doing uh, is looking at how we can do something like this and just set a grid max column count and then we have a maximum column count, but it's still willing to adapt and go lower. And we can update this custom property to whatever we want. And no matter what we throw at it, it's always going to work and it's always going to cap out at that max size. It's right there. So if that sounds good and something you want to add to your projects, well, you're in the right place. Let's jump right to it. I'm just using an auto fit here with the min max. If you've never seen this before, uh, especially the auto fit, uh, but even the repeat syntax or anything like that, I would suggest checking out the video that is linked in the description. There should be a card popping up as well. I don't want to go into the basics of how this is working in this video. I want to focus on just setting a maximum column count. So I'm assuming that you're already familiar with how this part of it is working. So if you're still here, awesome. Uh, what we're going to do is, or basically what I want is this mat, grid max column count of three. I don't want to be able to go above three columns and it just keeps making columns and that gets a little bit annoying sometimes. Uh, in some cases it's perfect, but sometimes it would be nice if it didn't do that. So what we can do for this or what would make the most sense is let's actually remove this would be to do something like calc 100% divide by three. And that should give me three columns because I'm saying 100% divided by three. Uh, but if I do that, I'm only ever going to get two columns here. And the reason I'm only getting two columns is because of my pesty gap that's here. If I didn't have a gap, we would be completely fine because 100% divided by three, we can throw three columns in there. But as soon as we add some gaps into or in between each one of those columns, when we divide by three, it doesn't quite fit anymore, right? Because it's divided by three, but we have that extra spacing there. And then because we have a one FR on here, it's just growing to fit that extra space because it can only fit two columns with the gap there. So we need to do something here to get this to work. And I guess you could be cheeky and just do like a minus four or divide by four. And that would probably actually work. Uh, most of the time, I'm always worried that you might run into some weird use case. So you could just do something like, you know, a calc here of your column count plus one. I guess that would actually work. Uh, I just feel like you, the potential of running into issues or if you changed your gap, like if you turned off your gap, all of a sudden you will get four columns, which could be problematic. And I, I don't want that to happen. I want it so it's going to work every single time, no matter what I do. And we also get to learn some cool CSS th things <laughs> along the way in doing it. So uh, yeah, we basically we need to find a way to actually make this math here work a little bit better. So I'm going to break this onto multiple lines just so we can sort of focus on just the calc for now. And so we have the calc of 100%, but we actually want to do the calc of 100% minus the gap. And I'm just going to write gap like this and then we'll, we'll fix it up or no, we'll do var grid gap. I guess we can, we, it's still readable. Uh, so we want to do 100% minus our gap. But if I do a calc of 100% minus our gap, that's not quite enough. Uh, also, CSS does order of operations. So we're actually doing this first and then this. So I'm just going to wrap this in an extra set of parentheses. Uh, so it's pushing us in the right direction. The thing is, if I want to have three columns, I'd actually have two gaps. So then I have to, you know, how do I get that to work? And so we, we can actually do then is do a times var grid max call count. Right, because then we're going to be multiplying this times three. So it's giving us 100% minus three rem. And then we can divide that whole number by three, which is actually should be our call count here. <laughs> we might have to break this onto multiple lines as well, but let's, there we go. We can see all of it in one shot. Uh, and that's actually working. Uh, I did say we want this to work no matter what. And this will work every single time, but I am cheating a little bit right now just because uh, I'm relying on the uh, that 1FR to stretch things out. Because really, this is treating it like there's three gaps when there would be two. So you could come at the end here if you feel like you'd prefer uh, and actually do a minus of my var grid gap. And then you know it's exact. Uh, you can get away without this one though. So it's, it's up to you. I know I said I didn't want to cheat before, but that's because if I did cheat, there's the potential where things fall apart if I had no gap or I added a gap in. And I'm wondering if I went really big on a gap, if that could even cause some issues as well. So this would definitely be the safest way to do it. <laughs> it's not the most readable. And we're going to fix things up a little bit to help. 
Um, but it's definitely not the most readable, but it, this is exactly what we want. But as I said, if you'd prefer to keep it a little bit simpler, you could technically do something like this and you'd get away with it. Uh, so I, I really can't think of a situation where this version of it wouldn't work. So you choose the one that you would prefer. Now what I'm also going to do though, is I'm actually gonna take this entire calc. So we'll cut this whole thing out uh, and I'm gonna come here and I prefer doing things like this where I put a little comment like um, cal calculation do not touch. <laughs> And then I put the calculation here as a custom property. So we can say grid call calc, uh, call size. we'll say call size, just so if somebody is trying to remember or see how this works, or you're trying to remind yourself six months later when you come back to it, you can see the different parts. These are all different things you could adjust or play with. And then this is the one that is locked in stone. Uh, and then I could come here and say, this is my var grid call size calc. And the whole thing becomes a little bit more readable because you can see this is my calculation and then you can go and find where that calculation is being used and I just find it's a little bit more uh, user friendly. Uh, now in doing all of this, I have broken things completely. So let's just make sure I've named things uh, correctly. And I forgot a semicolon at the end, that was the problem. And we're almost all the way there, but we will run into a problem right now where we we're always at the three columns and we never go down. You can see it's a squishing, right? And the reason that this is happening is because the way the uh, auto fit here works is it's only going to create less columns if it, the current column size doesn't fit. But we've created this calculation to make it work so it's always going to be three columns. And because it's based on that 100%, it's just no matter the size of the parent, it's always going to work completely fine. So how can we fix that? And this comes, it, depending, you might want another uh, layer of your calculations here. Uh, so grid, <laughs> this is calculating the size. And then we could say something like grid call min size calc. And for this one, it's a little bit easier. Basically what we wanna do, and I'll, I'll do it without the, the custom property to start with, and then we'll, we'll bring it in as a custom property. But I just wanna say that we can never get the these columns should never get smaller than this 180 pixels. So if I come here and I just do a max, and I'm just gonna bring all of this inside a max thing, which is always fun when we start putting mins and maxes inside of min max functions, because uh, we're also gonna add a min in here after. Uh, but say I do a max of 180 pixels, comma, and then this number, and that's actually gonna solve the problem. We have three columns, we're gonna go down to two columns, and then we're gonna go down to one column right there. And that's because the columns want to be the bigger between these two values. So as long as the space for the columns is larger than 180 pixels, this number is the right number. But if the number gets smaller than 180 pixels, so all three of these columns are approaching where it's gonna be smaller than 180, then it switches over and it uses this as the minimum value instead of it using this as our minimum value. Uh, and then they're getting closer to 180, 180, 180, and then boom, it happens again. And this is, the, basically this only really comes into play when we get to larger sizes to prevent more columns from being created. Because as we saw from the beginning, if this is our only value, then it's just gonna keep creating more of them. So we're setting an upper bounds on how many columns uh, will get picked between the two. So that's almost uh, completely fine, but what we'd actually wanna do is make this here, so we can take this entire max that we just did <laughs> that's right here uh, and cut that out and place that right here. And then we could come here and say, this is my var grid call min size calc, <laughs> right? And if we did that correctly and I remember my semicolons, it should be, there we go, we have three columns down to two columns down to one column. There's one more issue that could potentially come up. This is very dependent on your layout and other things that you're doing. But if I did boost this number up to say 400 pixels, just because that's the size I need, I am gonna run into an issue here where uh, I'm not running into it because I just realized I made a mistake in this calculation where I should have used this. Instead of 180, this should be my var uh, and I copied it so we can paste that in. There we go. Uh, so everything's fine now. We have that maximum of 400 pixels. It's gonna work exactly the same way. But then at smaller screen sizes, I will run into where I get some side scrolling. And some people tell me the values that they put here, they never actually run into them. But grids like this can sometimes have children or other thing, or siblings I should say, that are next to them, right? So we're gonna add that in just to highlight the problem even more. 
where I'm going to come down a little bit in here and I'm going to update my grid where I'm just going to, the main layout, you'll see what this does, but I'm just going to add a second column. I'm actually going to make this one a little, uh, no, this should be fine. Uh, and then we're going to come all the way up actually into my HTML where I have an extra little aside that we're going to throw in as a sidebar. And that will, there we go, we've loaded that in. We have a sidebar to this layout now. So we have our two columns going down to one column and then it jumps on over. Uh, actually, we won't put that in a media query just to <laughs> highlight this problem a little bit more. Uh, yeah, so just for this silly demo purpose, I am gonna get rid of the media query here. So when we're at smaller sizes, we still have uh, the sibling and you can see what's happening is this is going on and that's obviously not something we want. We, don't, we wouldn't want this to hide behind there. And I think for this, I'm also gonna change this over to a Dodger Dodger blue, just so we can really see uh, the way the, that we're breaking our layout when we get to this size. And so to prevent anything like that from potentially ever happening, just we're, we're going through all this trouble of adding in all these calculations and doing everything else, we might as well make it even more robust. Where, and this is up to you where you'd wanna put this, I'm gonna put it as part of here, or let's start, we'll put it down here first to understand it, and then we'll move it off into our calculations. Where here, I would actually do a min function and I'm gonna wrap this whole thing in a min, and if you've watched me before, you've seen me do this, which basically says that it is going to use this number unless this number is going to cause overflow issues and then it's going to use 100% as the minimum size uh, that it can get to. So everything else will work exactly the same, but now, I mean, here I'm, I'm getting some issues where it's overflow within the elements uh, just because they're running out of room. But everything is working, whereas if we took this off, once again, just to highlight, how or what it was doing before, then they go and they stick out the side, which we don't want happening. So I'm gonna bring that back in. But again, maybe this is kind of weird to have this here. It makes it a little bit, you know, we're, we're doing all this work. And this is really based on the minimum column size. So I'm very comfortable just saying min and then wrapping this max along with all of this other stuff uh, right here in my min. And then I can just do 100% comma. And it's it, the order that you put values in min or max functions really doesn't matter. Uh, you can even have like five different values in there if you wanted to. So the order there doesn't, doesn't matter. And then I can take this min off and take this one off here and we can stick with just having our calc size here and the 100%. And as we can see, everything works. And if we change this number, say down to 200, we'll get up to our three columns because we actually have space for it. Uh, and now it will go down to two, go down to one and everything works really good. And now, even though we have all of this set up, I wanna show one more thing that's a future CSS thing uh, that's coming, that's really, really exciting. <laughs> we can't use it yet, so if you're done the video, I guess you're done, um, just watch it anyway, because then it's good for, for YouTube. They like when watch time is long. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really excited about this, uh, which is basically for the grid max column count here, uh, we can now potentially use the ATTR function. And the ATTR, at the current time of uh, this video coming out was only used in pseudo elements basically for, or not just pseudo elements, but it was used for the content property. And it was very limited to how we could use it. And now it's opening the doors into being able to use it in many, many, many different ways. Uh, and it's only in Chrome right now, but it will be coming to the other browsers because uh, it literally has been in the spec for, forever. Uh, so it's very exciting to see this coming. So on my grid here, I'm just gonna come here and say uh, max call count. And you can do this with a custom data attribute if you want, so a data max call count, or it also just accepts custom attributes. So we can just say a max call count is going to be equal to, let's say, five. Uh, yeah, we'll do five. And we're gonna overwrite the value that we have right here. And now what we can do is, with that max call count here, I can actually come here where I had my max uh, grid max call count, and I can replace this with an ATTR attribute. And we can say max call count because we want it to grab the max call count attribute. Uh, the only thing is you'll see when I do that, it's not actually working yet. And it's because if we do want to use this new attribute feature in like the new way of doing it, where it can grab the value of attributes and use them in different ways, this will only work now uh, where you have to go here and say what the type is because we have to tell it the syntax. And this is very similar to registering a custom property. So I can come here and then inside of triangle brackets, I give the syntax of it, which is in this case, we can say it is a number. And now we can say I have two columns, then three columns, then four columns, and then it maxes out at five columns. Or I could come down here and I could say this is a two. And now we have one column up to two columns and we've maxed it out at two columns. 
And if we want to, we can also come here and put a comma and then put three, and that would be the fallback value. So if we don't declare a max column count, then we end up with our three columns working just as it was before. And if I change this over to a two, because you want 23 would be a lot, we can do a two, and now two is our maximum. So this is the fallback, the same way you can do fallbacks for custom properties. And as I said, then if you do want to change it, you just come on here uh, and we do a max call count is equal to four or whatever we want and it just works. Uh, again, this is future CSS. It's something that's on the way, so it's not quite here yet, um, but I'm really excited for this to actually be a thing, uh, which is really, really cool. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I know some people are saying this is just sort of, they don't like mixing these things together, but I was already using data attributes and having to create classes for a lot of things instead of modifier classes. So for me, this is really, really nice. Um, it just simplifies things instead of needing a class for three, a class for four, a class for five, or whatever it was to be able to modify all of these. It basically allows us to create like utility classes in a sense that yes, I know that this will definitely be a use case for them, uh, but that you don't need tons of classes for because you can just update the value here and that updates the value being used and so we don't need to loop through things to create all the different classes that we want for it or whatever else it was it just works and it's i think it's really cool so yeah i hope you find that interesting and like it as well if you want more grid videos and cool stuff that we can do with grid because you enjoyed this one and some other tricks and fun stuff i have a video that you might really enjoy that is right here for your viewing pleasure and with that i would like to thank my enablers of awesome andrew simon and tim as well as all my other patrons and channel members for their monthly support and with that of course until next time don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome